Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here again tonight. Annex 17, checking out some live USB features. Today I'm going to show you how to make a live, persistent live USB using our live USB maker tool, the basic version. I'm going to be using a USB 3.0 stick. This is a PNY 32 gigabyte stick with a little curly cue, monkey tail thing. Uh, the monkey tail makes it better, obviously. I just like it. So I'll put that in the, in the drive here. Now I'm also running live already, and you can see this is my flux bo space flux box. You can see it up here, space flux box. You can see persistence root enabled. I got all that going on. Uh, so we're going to power up VirtualBox here, and uh, I'm going to start VirtualBox so I can show off the boot menu for for the system. Now on a live USB, you get this boot menu, and the Antics way of setting up a system, you should really use as many options as you can from the live system before you set it up. Things like language, where you can choose your language. Things like your time zone, so you can get your time zone right. Things like your persistence options and a few little odds and ends here. Like if you want auto mounting or not. When you Like when you put in a USB or an, or an optical disk in, do you want it to automatically mount and launch a file manager? Well, these are the options you want. Uh, if you want to use the Wicked or YCD network manager, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, you can use the CNE Network Manager tool that comes in Antics. CNE is a text-based network manager, uh, and it edits the networking slash Etsy slash networking slash interfaces file. This is actually the first file that gets processed before any any daemons like YCD or Network Manager would run. So if you're if you're at home and you got like an Ethernet connection or one wireless network at home. Cine is actually the fastest way for your system as it's booting to get online. Just keep it in mind. Check it out. Give it a chance. It's a great tool. But it, but if you're like me and you bounce around between a couple of different home networks, you might want to work at home network or coffee shop down the street. You might want to use YCD because it can store multiple net wireless networking profiles. If so, just click that, turn it on, you're good to go. You can turn it on after boot if you want to, if you need to, if you didn't do it on the live CD, it can be enabled later, don't worry. Okay, desktop lets you choose what desktop you want. Rock size WM is the default, and that's what this disk will boot when I boot it in VirtualBox. I'm using Space Fluxbox um, here because I'm an old Fluxbox guy. And space, all the space means is that Space FM is managing the desktop, so I have proper icons on the desktop. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> There's some other some other window manager options in here. Uh, minimums, minimums without any icons and with fewer features enabled, that sort of thing. And these font size uh, items let you set the DPI for the system. So by default, most, most systems default to 96 dots per inch DPI. If you set that to 1.2, it's going to use a 1.2 multiplier and all your text and icons should be just a little bit larger when you boot the system. It should be handy for people with high DPI screens or with people with very large screens and, and, and not so good eyesight. Honestly, I often set mine to 1.3 just because I kind of like the bigger text and ISWM. And there's also an item, there's some items for setting console sizes and console widths that I will cover in a different video uh, right now. But I skipped the F5 menu and that's because that's our persistence menu and that's what we're interested in. Now by default, persistence all creates both a root persistence file for things like apps, for things like programs, um, uh, and root and and a home persistence file, which is going to be uh, things like your documents, anything that would be in your normal home folder on a regular installed system. Uh, you can also set make just a root persistence file, and you'll get you'll still get a, a home folder, but it'll be inside that root persistence file. So you just have one persistence file storing everything instead of two. By default, those two options will try to load the root persistence file into RAM for faster access. But if you're RAM strapped, if you're and a lot of Annex users are, we have the persist static option. And what that means is that it's going to be hosted on the, the, those files will be hosted on the stick instead of trying to load it into RAM. It's a little slower on USB 2. On USB 3, I barely notice. Um, so I'm actually going to use the, the persist static because I'm most comfortable with it, and it gives me the least problems when I'm recording videos. Persist Home does all that stuff, except it just makes a home persistence file. And I should also note that home persistence files, you can think of as a home partition, don't go into RAM ever. They're always running off the USB stick. Data th off, in and out off those is very, very small, so there's no real performance gain to had to be had by loading them into RAM. Uh, 
And there's also frugal options. That is for installs to a hard drive. Think of turning a folder on your hard drive, say your Windows partition, into a little antics uh, uh, desktop. You boot that, you boot the frugal entry with your USB stick, and then it finds the drive and boots the rest of the way off the hard drive. It's a really slick system. But today, we're just going to make a simple live USB with persistence, and I'm going to do that. Um, actually, I don't really need the ISO here because I'm already running live. So I'm going to close VirtualBox for now because we don't need it. Power off. And I'm going to just run it right off of this system, and it's in Applications, System Tools, Live, da, ba, da, ba, da, live USB Maker. Okay. Now, the first thing you're going to see is it's going to ask, do I want to clone the running live system? That's because I'm running a live USB right now, and I can clone what I have right now. Um, uh, and that is very useful in a sense that if I anything that's in the primary Linux file system file, it's a squash FS file, they're big. It's going to be like 800 megabytes. And anything that's in that file will go over to the clone system. I don't think the root persistence and the home persistence files carry over, but anything that's in that Linux FS file system, the main antics default file system will. Well, what if I want changes on that system? Well, that's what it makes. That's what that's what the antics remaster systems for. And I will show that remaster system off as long as the little internals of the live USB files in another video, because it's important to understand what you're doing when you're doing remaster. Uh, but anyway, I don't need to clone the running file system. I, I want to make an ISO because that's what you a lot most of you will want to do. And so when you do that, you get a file selection box. You get a, a, a disk selection box. I've already plugged the drive in, so it's showing up. And you get several modes. You get a normal mode, which is our normal full-featured boot on anything, UEFI, legacy boot, doesn't matter. And it gives you all the really cool uh, persistence features. Which is so that's what we're going to want. You can also use use it to make a a, 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 D, a disc a USB stick with what's called DD mode. This is the so-called disc on a stick, a CD on a stick, where you're going to get a big read-only file system. You don't get any of the persistence features, but it'll boot on anything, and it's kind of a fail-safe. And if you want to use Live USB Maker to make that Ubuntu CD, will go stick, go right ahead. DV, DD mode is the mode for you. Update will take an existing Antics Live USB stick and allow you to update it with a new newer file, new, newer set of stuff. And Encrypt Live USB lets you take the USB and encrypt it from the ground up. The whole stick will be encrypted except for a small boot partition. But more importantly, all your data and stuff will be encrypted. Why is this important? Well, it's a USB stick. It's portable. It's in your pocket. If you get a hole in your pocket and it falls in the gutter, do you really want everybody in the universe to be able to access whatever's on your stick? <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm just saying whatever's on your USB stick uh, can fall into you know anybody else's hands. So maybe encryption is the right thing for you to do that. All right, I'm going to use normal mode, and we're going to click apply. Oh, I forgot to select the, stick, the file. So we're going to select a file. Now while I'm here, I want to show you one other tip. This is the home folder on the Linux Live, on the Annex Live USB system. And you'll notice there's a link in here called Live USB Storage. This is actually outside. This is a link to storage space on the USB stick outside of the persistence files. So that six gigabyte limit doesn't apply here. And why do I use it? Well, I've got the ISO stored outside, and I've got my I've got my Antix Virtual Box stored in here uh, somewhere. Oh, that's right. It's filtering the ISO. This filters the ISO. Anyway, the, this Antic 17 here is the virtual box system I was using earlier. So I'm going to click this to get the file and click apply. Now this does not take very long on a uh, USB 3 stick, so we're going to let that run. And I will show off that live USB antics. You see, there's my virtual box files. It's nice to have big files like that, videos and movies and whatever, outside the USB file system. Now, what's funny is I actually went camping this weekend, and I had a um, e EPC with me, one of the originals, 904HA, 32-bit. I had a movie. I was watching a Star Trek movie. I was going to watch a Star Trek movie after the kids went to sleep, and I said, well, I don't know, I forgot. I don't have Annex on there right now, so I'll boot the thing up, um, and it booted into Windows. Windows XP couldn't play an MP4 file. We forget what Windows couldn't do. It's the like good old days of Windows XP, everybody thinks, but it couldn't play an MP4 file without VLC on it. Just saying. At any rate, 
Remember that I installed Annex 17, a, 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 actually a beta, <laughs> beta 3 was on that book. Pulled that sucker out, booted up, watched my movie right off of the live USB storage that I had stored there, so I didn't need to get into the persistent systems to do that. Watched my movie, had a great time. Good time was had by me, because I was the only one in the tent. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to pop the disc out and pop it back in, because uh, it ejects when you're done, so it, 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 it needs to be reinserted if you're going to pull this USB trick. Now I'm going to boot into VirtualBox here. This isn't necessary. You would boot on your regular system. I need to boot in VirtualBox to show you the menus because I'm going to use the From USB option to boot from the USB stick. Okay, it's booting from the USB stick. Oh, I forgot to hit the Persistence option. Let me just close this. Power off the machine. Let's try this again. So I'm going to hit F5, Static Persistence, and F4 from USB. There we go. Ba -da 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 -da. And now it's going to ask me to create the persistence files. There we go. So it's asked me to create the persistence files. You can create whatever size file you want. This is a big USB stick. I normally make big USB, big persistence files. So I'm going to hit Custom, and I'm going to go to the maximum for 6 gigabytes. Now our system will make this file very fast because it's based on ext4 and there's a thing called sparse files. Anyway, nerd moment, it makes it fast. So I'm going to create a home persistence file as well. I'm going to take the default on that one. Now it's going to ask to put in some passwords because now the system is no longer just a USB, a, 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 a disk on a stick. Now it's got a live file system on it. So you want to protect that with your own passwords. Again, this is handy for the encryption too. And here we are. We're in the we're in the system. Now, now that we're in, I when, if I want to make a persistence file, I mean I have a persistence file. So if I install an application, it will be saved for the next boot. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, now we're going to install something like simple. Oh, let's install something simple like simple screen recorder. Ah, uh, simple. Now I could do in this. You don't, this stuff doesn't have to happen from the command line. I'm just going to do it from the command line because it's fast. It's any of your usual install methods: package installer, Synaptic, the new command line Aptics installer, CLI Aptics installer. All it, it doesn't matter. It's all on the file system level. You don't have to do any, You don't have to know anything. You just do your stuff. Now it's installing, and now when I reboot this system, now remember we booted from the uh, from the the ISO, but all these changes are actually happening on the USB stick because we did that from USB. It hands off the boot to the USB stick. You don't have to do that on a regular piece of hardware if your system of USBs. I just needed to do that so I could show it on the screen. And there we go. For the Fluxbox, ISWM, and JWM menus are loaded, are updated. And if I go into Applications, we're going to find Simple Screen Recorder there. All right. So let's go ahead and close down. And we'll reboot, and I'll show you that the file is, in fact, there and that the, that the uh, live save system did what it was supposed to do. F5, Persist, F4. Now, again, this is where that save feature, if you're not running off the ISO, the save feature is handy because you don't have to do this every time. You just do it the once. And it makes a custom entry for you. So it's going to load my persistence files. It's found the persistence files. It's loading all the system changes. And it's going to put them into uh, use when the desktop comes up. And there you are. Simple screen recorder, live USB with persistence. Done. Easy peasy. Next video, I'm going to show you how to take that system and remaster it so that it saves the space of those persistence files. You gain it back, and you can make new persistence files if you want to. And we'll do a little deep dive of how the system works. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to 
AnticsLinux.com. That's right, new URL address. Or throw up a post at www.AnticsForum.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great day.